welcome back to sallyheesbeauty.com. I am still in the bathroom with Lily Allen. Um, if you are at this point, you've missed one. You need to go back if you haven't already seen it, uh, where we talk loads about Lily's new book, um, which is bloody brilliant. She didn't place this here as product placement. This is my copy <laughs> that I brought in with me. Um, it's properly good, I promise. Really, really, really well worth the read. So we talked loads about that in part one. But we're in the sunshine hour now because we're going to have a look at loads of product. You Yay! do like a bit of product, don't you? L love a product. What do you like the best? Like, what would you, if you could only <coughs> have one thing? One thing. Hmm. Probably my cleanser. Do you take your makeup off before you go to bed? Yeah. You? Do you? So, like, even in bad girl days? Uh, well, no, I think my, 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 my skin seemed to sort of like look after itself a bit more in those days, so I didn't really need to, but definitely yeah. as, the, as the years have gone by, and yeah, I couldn't, oh, I couldn't sleep in my makeup, unless I was really, really wasted. It's horrible. <laughs> it's that, that, I have slept in my makeup on, on very many occasions if I've like been partying or whatever. It doesn't happen very often. Just that moment when you wake up and your pillowcase is like the two-inch mm. shroud. Yeah. And... Like you almost don't want to emote because your face is like cracking as you're moving. <laughs> Such a horrible feeling. So, what is your favourite cleanser? Um, it's uh, in the middle there, the high tube. So no, to the right. Oh, this. No, right again, the higher one. Yeah. This one. Oh, oh, it's exfoliating off. Oh, cleanser. So, are you an Abaji girl? I am. Yeah. Mm, why are you an Abaji girl? What made you start on the Abaji program? Um, I actually can't remember where I started. I think um, I used to go to this woman, um, Mariam Zamani, mm -hmm. at the London Clinic for facials and stuff. And she kind of said, I think this stuff will work for you. And I've just used it ever since. Are you on the oily side? Yes, I am. Well, quite quite um combination. And it really depends on the weather. You know, I kind of, my skin changes all the time. So... Cleanser you can't be without, then what happens? So you're doing that twice a day with this cleanser? Yeah, sometimes three times a day. I'm a little bit of a cleansing freak, actually. And then what happens after that? Well, I cleanse with this and then um, I coat, what are these called? Conjac. Yeah, that's a Dr. Francis Prenner Jones one, is it not? I don't know where this is from. Mm, I think that might be a Dr. <laughs> Francis Prenner Jones one. Um, this is also very important. I can put my, my hair back. I, I just lose them though. They're all over the bloody house and they're never there when I need them. I've got about 100. Um, and then uh, probably twice or three times a week I then do the exfoliating polish as well on top of that and then in the morning I will use a bit of this daily defence or the renewal cream. Are you depending. a sun worshipper or are you a protector? Um, well it's actually <laughs> really funny yesterday I was went to a fashion show and um, there was like a paparazzi picture of me sort of like leaning over and you can see my leg and my face in the picture and my face is a completely <laughs> different yeah. colour to my leg and I'm like, oh, I'm growing up, I've been wearing a sun hat. <laughs> so brown leg, white hair. Exactly, yeah. Um, so I'm, I am, I, I do do, you know, SPF in the morning, um, but, but I am a sun worshipper for sure. I love sitting out in the sun. Are you in a better mood in the summer? Yeah. And also I get quite a lot of congestion around um, my jawline and I find like three days in the sun and it just clears, my, clears up my skin. I mean, that is the sad reality. A little bit of sun makes most things in the skin better. Yeah, like Whatever sure. your condition is, unless it's rosacea, it, it normally does something. Do you get those spots here that are just like agonising, like they're pushing up against the surface of your skin, they're really hurty? Yeah, but then sometimes, I mean, I also get a beard. <laughs> <laughs> can't really see it I'm forever pluck my beard you know when you get to some place especially hotels they've got those mirrors with the super yeah. magnifying yeah. thing on and I'm like this and I'm like why has nobody told me oh, yeah. I'm an actual chinchilla <laughs> What is going on? And when they're really stiff, like pipe cleaners. Yeah. Like really but someone, like a, a makeup artist I had the other day said she thought maybe sometimes it might be um, like, because they're like very soft, fluffy hairs, but they can still oh. become ingrown. So she was like, maybe you're getting like ingrown hairs on your jawline. Well, that's nice for you. Yeah. Something to look forward to. Something to look forward to. <laughs> you've got tons of like desi here yeah i don't really know how to use those things i just sort of like dab them on as and when yeah so you've got some ahas and some bhas do you know what they all do yeah so so this is an aha and bha so these are um to exfoliate they're like oh, yeah. liquid exfoliants um this is just like a lovely rosehip oil um 
I just think oil is really good because it's a really kind of impatient, lazy girl's best friend. And mm. you put an oil on at night, you will look better tomorrow than you did tonight. So that's it's funny because this is my um, like London regime. Okay. But then when I go on holiday Whoa. or I'm in the country, I Can move I on to Sarah Chapman stuff, which is a little bit more natural. I um, love this range. I use this isn't it nice? Lot. Yeah. But this I tend is one of my faves. Yeah, very good. Bloody hell, you're very neat. Have you tidied up for us? No, actually, I'm, I'm quite neurotic about <laughs> these things. I think this is one of our most ordered bathroom cabinets ever. Oh, really? Yeah. I wonder if I've got my... Is my medicine still in here? Oh, yeah, look, here's my medicine cabinets. This is like... Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is like a piece of conceptual art or yeah. something. It's like, um, remember the interiors of the pharmacy <laughs> restaurant? Yeah, and this, sorry, this is really good for, um, this is like a medical cream, Differin, which I put on my spots when, I, when they're really bad, and that seems to kind of clear them up. Um, I don't want to dwell on that in case anything's got your address on it, but um, oh. loads of sun care. Yeah. Good to see. That, that Vichy water is amazing. I really like it. Yeah. yeah that pump water. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's really good. But it's quite annoying. It's got sort of stuck in the spray thing. So now when I spray it, it's like sort of dribbles out and globs rather than like a nice, even. Just put it under the tap. Oh, and okay. it'll Well, you're it. full of tips. Full <laughs> <laughs> sort of hacks, as they say these days in the biz. What is in this one? This one is more sort of homeopathic stuff and the electronics. Yeah. Blue roll. So this I, is my favourite bath stuff. I love this. Fresh so Saki fresh. bath. Yeah. I love fresh. It's so nice. very good. So are you a bubbles person or an oil person? Uh, it depends what mood I'm in. I, I really, I like, I love that fresh soak. But if I'm like, yeah, I'm sometimes more oily if it's like a in, invigorating bath that I need. Do you buy stuff or do you get sent it? Bit of both. But I mean, I'm a real shopaholic. Like, I, yeah really bad yesterday I went to John Lewis and it was a Sunday and you know they have you're not allowed to they like put over them the tannoy they're like John Lewis is open for browsing until 12 o'clock because yeah, they're not allowed, they're not to, allowed open to put it through the till yeah nightmare because I was just like 45 minutes just to like <laughs> <laughs> pick up some crap I don't need <laughs> do, you, do you shop to cheer yourself up sometimes? yeah like, it's a form of escapism for me it's like oh I'm this person <laughs> I've definitely, there've definitely been periods in my life when I've been really down that I've just spent too much money on shit I didn't need. Yeah, for sure. I read somewhere. I think it might have been the very good Sophie Hayward interview in the. Should Garden. I close this? Is it so, more pleasing for you guys? Oh. Um, there's a very good uh, interview with Sophie Hayward in the Guardian that's just run this last weekend. And I think it was in that I read it. You saying that at a certain point in your life you were sort of telling yourself that you were the kind of person who would spend ten grand on a ring, and then just <laughs> thinking, oh no, what have I done? I'm not. No, I'm broke. <laughs> I've got, I've got money. Money. <laughs> Yeah. But you do. You kind of shop for the person you you have decided, decided that Decided that I was. Yeah, and also yeah. It, did it, it used to be a lot worse before I had kids because since I've had kids, um, well, actually post Jesus and, and me sort of recovering from that period of time, I don't go out as much. So it's sort of like I used to shop to buy things that I would wear out, whereas now I just don't really go out. And so. would you feel like... Um, part of your confidence in going out was, I have to be wearing a new thing, I have to... I have to buy something and that will make me feel good to go out because I think that's yeah. quite common yeah, for sure. when you're feeling down. You think, well, I need an extra thing to bolster me yeah. forward. And all, it was just also, I think when, when I'm on tour, there's always you know, certain brands that are everywhere and in a weird way, they kind of make you feel like you're at home. So it's like, you know, if you're in the middle of Kentucky or Nashville, you can still find a Chanel or a Prada and yeah. you're like, home. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Better take a wash bag than another one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it is very wasteful. Um, I always shop at airports, so I don't have to buy products. I get sent literally everything, and yet still, if I'm in an airport, I feel like I it. have to buy a thing mm. because that's part of being there. I'm actually more I, in airports. I tend to lean more towards like useless electronic gadgets. <laughs> phone charger that you use. Yeah, those portable chargers. <laughs> I've got so many of whole collection of yeah. those. Yeah, I've got loads of those as well. I literally always lose them. My other thing that I buy way too many of, which I, I can show you my collection, is those Tweezerman nail clippers. You know, the cuticle kind of clipper things. Can I'm I tell you what the best nail clippers in the world are? Please that do. They're so much better than those. Sorry, okay. Tweezerman. Muji. Oh, really? 
So the Muji nail clippers are so good. They're so sharp. They're like three quid or something. Mm. They're so sharp. You don't have to file. Mm. Afterwards, it's the most clean, clean Edge. cut. They're so good. They do a big toenail work and a little fingernail work. Oh my one. goodness. I'm, so going, I'm going there straight after this. I am evangelical <laughs> about Muji nail clippers. So what have we got here? Hair. Who does your hair? Um, my friend Jake does my hair mainly, but um, I sort of try and keep it not breaking when I'm not working. Are you going to stay bleached for a while? Yeah, I think so. It does suit you. Do you do you believe in the blonde brunette theory, where everybody, regardless of their hair colour, is either in personality a blonde or a brunette? I don't know. I mean, I definitely like. I didn't. I didn't try blonde until my late twenties. Um, but I always wanted to get to like very, very light, but I just always seemed to like fuck it up and everything would fall out. So now it's yeah. become like a challenge. It's like, I will have long white blonde hair. Gandalf. <laughs> and then as soon as I get it, I'll be like, right, back to brown. Yeah. <laughs> Done that. So what have you, so you've got quite a lot of oils and treatment things here, understandably. Yeah, that got, that got to be stuff, the Schwarzkopf, that's a really, really heavy hairspray, which I use. It's very good, that hairspray. I use that when I'm wearing a lace front wig, so I use that to stick the lace down. To glue yourself yeah. down. It is brilliant, that product. And then you've got loads of kind of treatmenty things to stop it snapping. Yeah, lots, many, many of those. Lots of Philip Kingsley elasticizer. So wherever I go, however posh people's body care is, they've always got, <laughs> they've always got an upside down Palmer's or Vaseline yeah. intensive care. It, that's not even bad. Usually we have that, but then like with the cut open, because we do. Yeah, we... yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great knife. Yeah. Um, so yes, Palmer's. I mean, if it's not broken, Mm. You don't need to uh, fix it. And then these are like a thing now, aren't they? Your masks. Sheet masks. Yes. I'm it, quite into those now. They're very, they're Instagram, they're almost like content now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and also you don't have to Me wear in a mask. Makeup. And you notice when you put a sheet mask on, your eyes, the gap look really bright and yeah, big. Exactly. And everybody looks weirdly pretty in a sheet mask. Especially like with the bunny ear filter, I find. <laughs> I, I, I never do the bunny ear thing. I oh. just feel like I'm too old. And um, this, this hand cream, which I love as well, do you think it looks like a sex toy? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it's quite funny. I mean, it's very satisfying. It's the pebble hand cream from Chanel. Um, and I gave this to my friend Marco when they sent it to me because he was a bit sad and he thought I'd literally given him a sex toy. <laughs> Chanel sex toys, that would be funny. I mean, I mean, <laughs> there's not really much you can put across C on that I'm not going to be into. <laughs> literally anything. So we've got masks down here, sizzly masks. Yeah, sizzly masks are really good. But this one, if you've got like sort of five minutes before you've got to start getting yeah. ready, and this one, if you've got sort of 20 minutes, and then these, if you've got sort of 30 minutes, 40 minutes, or on planes, I always take these on airplanes with me and do that about half an hour before I get off. So do you get on the plane, take everything off, and then just before you land, just put like all the stuff on, all the moisture? Um, yeah, basically. Soak it all up. Yeah. Do you drink on a plane? Um, no, not really. I'm a big sleeper on planes. So I just go, I just pass out. Do you need loads of sleep as a person? Um, no, I don't. But I just really enjoy that, like not having my phone. And um, I, the only reason I probably don't sleep is for connectivity, just like phone and access to box sets always being there. Whereas it is. It's horrible. It's that moment where every day you're like, shit, it's tomorrow again. Yeah when you're in bed. It's like, I really should have gone to bed today <laughs> instead of tomorrow. And Lizelle, are you a fan? Uh, yeah, I love Lizelle. I kind of, sometimes like, you know, I'll get, um, as I said earlier, like my skin will sort of just change with the seasons. And so then I kind of go back to like to the more natural stuff, which is the Sarah Chapman or the Lizelle, because it, it always seems to just kind of calm everything down a little bit. But then if I'm like working a lot, then, I need like, all of this resurfacing stuff because my skin does get quite clogged up so I kind of feel like I need all the acids and the um, exfoliation. It's, yeah, Liliana discovers a different kind of acid as her life changes <laughs> and moves forward. She's all about the VHA. Um, <laughs> I quite associate you with Chanel as a brand because you love Chanel fashion, don't you? Yeah. You're quite often worn Chanel and they yes. kind of like you and have had you at their shows and stuff. Yeah. Um, is that an aesthetic thing or do you just love the, the fragrances? 
Uh, no, I really like them. I mean, they're, they're all so different, you know. Um, they're for different, different things for different occasions. I have to say, my favourite, this is my favourite fragrance at the moment. I don't even know one. that fragrance. It's this company called Nazimoto, sorry. Um, that one's my favourite, I think. Uh, that and one's really this, lovely. There's another Udi one, and then this is just It's a classic. classic. It's a classic. And you can be really liberal with it. Yeah, I mean, just get out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> Number five, I would tell you now. And then these ones, which are quite glamorous, but I haven't opened the other two. But I do know what this one is like. That one's Biarritz and that one's Deauville. I'm very lucky with my Chanel. They send me lots, so. That's beautiful, that bottle. Isn't it? Yeah. Do you like to adore? Yeah. Um, and these ones are so beautiful as well. Well. God, that's so lovely. Isn't it? Nice word it. Yeah, please do. This is... So nice. Yeah, so I carry one of those very, every day. Very nice. So handy. What and what have you got? It's like you've got some foreign riches up here. Do you do you love a foreign chemist? Um, I like French chemists a lot. Just to get my things like my bioderma. I just I love like Muji for like these things, even though it's not that foreign. Um, what else do I? Yeah, I've been, I just like things, you know. <laughs> I lose lip balms like there's no tomorrow, so, so I'm always I. buying lip balms wherever I go. So do I. I've never got one when I want one, and then there are twelve hundred yeah. strewn around the house. Oh, it's always the way. Let's uh, close. Oh, Hydromax. Love Hydromax. That whole range. Hydro Beauty. It's called now. Actually. Um, do you, are you a little bit dehydrated because of all your travelling and, and having to work late and stuff? Yeah, I do get quite dehydrated. <clears throat> I have like quite a lot of those sort of spritzy sprays and stuff that um, I keep in my handbag sometimes. And so what have you got over here? You've got some Philip Kingsley. Yes, I've got, this is my, what I'm using currently because my hair is white. Um, but then when my hair has been coloured, you can see all my, oh, my right there. Bleach London. Nice. So you've got all the my colours. We've <laughs> <laughs> got the direct colour. And actually, these wing. are all from on your recommendation. I think. Thanks. Yeah. I love that brand. I bought all of those the other day from um, Pax. My favourite. Love Pax. What's that? Um, what's that spray to the right? That funny this one with the green label. That is. Is that for, from Pax? I've, I'm sure yeah, I've this seen that. is what I use like when people stick those extensions in my hair with mm -hmm. the glue, and then you spray this on, and then you can get them out. And that easily. Yeah, to break the bond. Yeah. I need to get some of that because I get extensions. It's Ooh. very good. And then these are all sponges. And yeah. I really enjoy these. They're very smelly in this. You can see, we've got 17 deodorants. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like a plain deodorant. You want you want double sure or something that just smells generic, don't you? Not one yeah. that smells like men or women. They're always quite bad, those, as they fight with your um, perfume. Exactly. Um, talk us through your uh, makeup. Yeah. What do you, so, so I should say, as a precursor, <laughs> it's fair to say that this is an edit. Everything to make up. Very small as it. Um, because uh, when we came in, Lily has an entire um, other area in her house that's just got makeup in it. And makeup and hair. Makeup and hair, and it's quite spectacular, but it's in her kind of family home, so we're not going in there. So she's pulled out the bits that she can't uh, live without. So yes. straight away, you have got a couple of products that I can't live without. This. I start, this is like always like my base and I actually use this underneath my um, foundation. You're quite brown, aren't you? You're yeah. naturally very olive. But I like putting this like on my sort of shadowy areas, just a bit of definition. Um, so I, I always sort of start off with that. Um, and then, depending on how my skin's feeling, I will, well actually no, first of all I start off with this. And um, which is, you know, sort of gives me a little bit of moisture, um, but it's not too greasy. dewy or, yeah. dewy or greasy, it's just quite sort of mattifying. Then um, pore filler, which from I, NYX. Yeah. Cheap. Yeah. Good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> People love that um, primer. 
Harry. It's not right for me, but I know loads of people who really love Harry. I like it. I mean, sometimes I use this one as well, the Benefit one, but I really like this one at the moment. Then it, I can put on, you can put this on before or after. Um, uh, my so foundation. it's like a way of mattifying without powder. Yeah. Shine killer. Because I do get, if I like just basically keep laying on powder, it just starts to just really, yeah. really cake. Yeah, really and you get streaks in it and stuff. So it's kind of like preventative measures first. And then, um, yeah, a lip balm. We'd let that soak in before you do your finishing touches. I like that one because it's quite matte, that needs yeah, to so it's it's so jammy. Yeah. Uh, then yes, then foundation. So I've got this Chantecai in the nude. Skin? Okay. It's future skin. Mm -hmm. um, or the Charlotte Tilbury's flawless filter. I wear that every day. Do you? Pretty it's much really every good. day. Yeah, I, really I like absolutely it. love it. People um, freak out about the packaging, which I understand. If you're super spotty and you want, to, you you need to kind of keep hygiene at the forefront mm. of your routine. But I, I, I don't break I that. So always, I always I'll just do I do this anyway on my hands and then apply from my hands. I never never use the applicator on my face. Oh wow, you're a nicer girl than me. I just whack it on. I absolutely love it. <laughs> and do you put that on all over, or it's just like a bit mm, of a I'm Just like evening out, like where I get like red patches. Like this is more like what I use for this or two chaclair. Um, I use you know under the eyes when I'm feeling a bit baggy. I love that. It's my favourite moment. What colour are you? Magic in away. That? This is four, which two. is fair. You are so pale. Which is weird because I'm not that pale. But anyway, yeah. Seems well, I'm a two to give you some perspective. Catlin's a one. <laughs> um, should say actually usually before I do. Um, foundation I'll do eyes so eyebrow Anastasia brow whiz do you, do you know her I do and, and I really love that product I've written about that product loads I tell you what annoys me about that product is the packaging snaps yeah have you had that happen to you before yeah I find it very annoying but I just internalize that and make it my fault no it's I've not been, your fault I've been um, yeah I've been, been too I don't know, what's the word? This will be the completion Careless. of your emotional journey the day you decide it's Anastasia's fault. <laughs> <laughs> and your pen is snapped. The moment you start hating on yourself for snapping quite crap packaging is the day that you um, are reborn. I'm liberated. Um, so yeah, eyebrows. And then I do, I'm quite fond of a false eyelash. So if I'm doing false eyelash, I'll do this on the inside of my eyes, on the top. Tend not to wear eyeliner on the bottom because it makes me look very tired. Um, and then eyelash, and then I'll use. Do you do extensions <coughs> ever, or are you always a strip lash? No, I just end up picking them out, and then I have no eyelashes left. Yeah, yeah. I'm a picker. Yeah. Um, so What's that in the pot? Uh, is it this is on? Black Track yes. Mac? Yes, a classic. It's a beauty classic. I know quite a few people who um, work for brands or they're makeup artists for specific brands or they own their own brands and all of them behind the scenes have got Mac Black Track. Whatever they're selling themselves, they always have Black Track. Everyone comes back to Black Track. Yeah. Um, I do also like this. If I'm doing like more of a sort of graphic eye, then I'll, I'll make the shape with this and then fill it in with the black track. That pops up a lot, that product. Does it? Gizzy. Do you know Gizzy? Yeah. Gizzy uses art liner for her. It's a good hair. I've used this for years. Years and years and years. I've never really found another one that... I mean, I'm not really looking. I'm happy with this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, life's, <laughs> life's finite. <Yeah. laughs> Um, Stick with it if you like just it. Just on a quest for the perfect eyeliner. Um, okay, so we've done eyes. What mascara is that, please? This is the Lancôme de Foncil. Yeah. Um, this is like a little bit more understated, I guess, um, which I probably I tend to use. If it's no lashes, then I'll just use this like on the ends rather than uh -huh. in, in the root, uh -huh. just for a little bit of um, thickness. And then this one is a little bit more... Zhuzh, a bit more gloopy. A bit of a slaggy lash. Yeah. <laughs> I like the slaggy lash. <laughs> and this is Yves Saint Laurent. And I then, love that cover FX spray. I use that. Isn't it great? I love it. I love it. It's so good. So this is the illuminating setting spray. So uh, people quite often ask me at events where you just say, is it okay if I spray Alnet on my face to set my makeup? It's like, it's so not cool. With you. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> 
<laughs> and so this is what I always tell them to get because it does it gives like a lovely kind of glowy finish, but it does Lock also in. Yeah. And then um, so once I've done all of that, then I'll do a little bit of uh, contouring, stroke, um, concealing with this. I've also got another Mac one that's a little bit smaller than this that I might put in my handbag, um, and I just sort of mix. Make the Are they cream the or powder? Powder. Cream. creams? And so, what do you do? Like buff it like mad to kind of make it. Good? I just do like I usually get like one of those um, uh, angled eyeliner brushes, yeah. and then I'll do my line, my Kardashian line <laughs> down my cheek. Have you watched the tutorials? Do you watch the Kardashian no, tutorials? And where are you with the Kardashians? Do you follow them? No, no I don't either. Them. I don't either. But I, I, but I rate them, though. No. I'm just not interested in it because I don't, you know, I think that they're just selling things the whole time. And I think that when you're on the other side of it, like I am, I can see that for what it's worth. And yeah. I respect them totally for what it is, but I don't need anything that they're selling me, so... Um, but have, I have do you appreciate... Have keeping abreast of the Jamila uh, situation? Yeah, I have. I mean, the thing is, what I, what, I'm totally supportive of Jamila and I totally understand where it is that she's coming from, but I also like the Kardashians for the fact that they're profiting off of their bodies, you know? It's not some other guy. And if the Kardashians went away, you're not gonna stop seeing half-naked women in no, the no, media. No, 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 for sure. It's just that women aren't gonna be getting paid directly for it, Rupert Murdoch is, or whoever else. So I, I like the fact that they are making lots of money out of their bodies. Yeah, see, uh, see, I neither dislike nor like the Kardashians. I'm fairly, I'm interested in how they affect kind of popular culture and uh, and women generally, but I'm not sufficiently engaged with them to be that bothered. However, for me, it was the diet lollipops that flipped me. Yeah. It was the weight loss lollipops. I'm more for them making money out of their bodies if that's what they want. But I think it 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 was the selling the lollipops to make you thinner, which was when I kind of went, I'm out. Yeah a bit. I think that's what she's talking about. Yeah, it's not it's not great. <laughs> it's not do you get do you get asked to flog things sometimes and No, no one ever asked me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're at least you're, canon. No we fit our brand. <laughs> <laughs> you're not really on brand for us. You're <laughs> empowered and liberated but in the wrong way. <laughs> Um, Would yeah. you ever do? Um, yeah, I'm here. It's give me the money. I'm, I'll take it. For <laughs> <laughs> kids to be exactly. Um, I'm also quite good at like selling things like subtly. What would you have been if you were? I know you trained as a florist. What is that? What you would have done if you hadn't have gone into music? Sales, <laughs> telly sales. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. Yeah, floristry maybe. Um, I might have, you know, if things hadn't have taken off for me when they did when I was 19, then I'm, you know, I might well have gone back to school and studied to be a lawyer or, you know, we, after losing George, I was really into the idea of, you know, going into midwifery. So I don't know, I'd, I'd, I'd have to go back to that period of time to, I don't know. I haven't got any GCSEs, but sometimes I, I sort of feel like there would be a big weight lifted off my shoulders if I did have my GCSEs and A-levels, because then I could go okay, I'm just going to go and study and do something for a couple of years, but I actually have to go back and like do my GFEQs. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, bless you for thinking you couldn't get on the course. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I think I'm that, sorry, Lily Allen, we I don't have your GCSE in cookery. But also, when I, was, when I was like into this idea of doing midwifery, I did like sort of just, like, you know, sign up for some information on a couple of courses and st I'm still on the list, so sometimes like, you know, I'll be <laughs> having it. You know, doing a shoot for Cosmopolitan or something, and I'll suddenly get this phone call going, Hello, why is that? And I'm like, Oh, but. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still interested in doing a midwifery course in Gloucester? No way. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but um, can I call you back later? Can we just park it? <laughs> can I just park it and see just, if I win the Mercury? Just or not? doing a Cosmo <laughs> cover, I'll call you back. <laughs> I lose the mercury. Just get back to me. I like to keep my options open. But do you think that you might one day do something else, or do you just think it's too much in the blood now? Um, I think you know. I think that my job will evolve. You know, I don't think that there's that much space for women in their late thirties in in pop music, which is what you know the realm that I've existed in up until this point. But you know, whether I I, I won't stop writing songs because I'm really good at it, and um, 
it's puzzling to me as to why this album hasn't done incredibly well. But anyway, <laughs> um, no, I've, I'll either you know, write music for other people. I'm working on two different musicals at the moment that like, I'm not allowed to discuss, but are you know, really exciting projects. Um, and, you know, who, who knows, you know. Um, so you could write for other people because, you're, <coughs> because, because your songs are so personal. They, they always seem, I don't mean necessarily that they're kind of, you know, all really, really intimate, but they always seem to be so much your voice about your life. Mm. Are you able to do that trick of, of sing, imagining a character? Imagining yeah, and voice? actually I find it much easier. Do you? Yeah. I mean, I th- I'm really like, you know, I do not judge people, but I'm definitely like fascinated by people and sort of putting people into boxes and where music is, it's really fun to do that with music like when I was I I did write the Bridget Jones musical and what I loved the most about that was um you know taking a character and deciding what music it was that defined that character and then writing their songs in that in that tone and that's just so much fun so it's kind of like a a sort of imaginary mixtape for somebody isn't it yeah do you still love making mixtapes because that was quite a big part of what you did on YouTube wasn't it yeah I mean I don't I don't really publish them but I like make my own playlists my stuff's not YouTube See, we move on so quickly with the times. I forgot it was my thing. But yeah, do you still like doing them for people? Uh, not really for other people. I do them for myself. So selfish. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's not. I don't. Yeah, I just don't really make them for other people. And what are you thinking about in the makeup chair when you're <coughs> at makeup time? Do you nod off, play on your phone, or are you watching what's going on? Um, no, I've, I'm, I've, I have my phone. Well, usually, actually, I'm not looking at my phone because the music is on in the dressing room and it's usually coming from my phone. So it's sort of like on silent, and I'm just pretty focused on my beautiful face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Making it even more beautiful. <laughs> um, well, it is a completely beautiful face. I get the impression you don't really think that, but I really think that. It's a beautiful face and it's a beautiful book. Um, it's so beautifully written. Um, and I wish you all the luck with the book. And with the Bleeding Mercury Prize. Oh, thank you. you. I really, really hope you get it. But just the fact that you're nominated for something that obviously matters to you, an album that really matters to you, is, is super cool. Lily Allen, thank you so much for having us. My it's been pleasure. A job. I have always, you've always been on my list of one of the women that I wanted to interview, but I haven't. So thank you for taking yourself off my list. Yay. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.